Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Intelligent Moron with Alex Silva. Today is Thursday, December 9th. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty much done with my Christmas shopping. Like, pretty much done now. Which is a good thing because, you know, at this time of the year, it could be kind of stressful. When, when you know, trying to figure out what somebody wants, to, wants for Christmas, if they can get it here on time, if it's not going to be delayed. But I'm pretty much done, which is, you know... A blessing in disguise because I got ahead of it this the, this year. Did it pretty quickly. Now it's all done. And you know, going through other sites like Amazon, I went to Macy's, I went to uh, I, I, uh, Target, Walmart, and just kind of like going through a bunch of sites and you know doing a research by looking up YouTube videos and checking stuff out like that. Trying to get a review, uh, not a review, but like a little bit of, of um consensus if this product is good or not. Um, if it's worth the purchase, because you know Amazon ratings and other sites ratings, you know sometimes they could be kind of sketchy in some some points. Like I remember one time I bought a a pretty bad trimmer that was like rated pretty highly, and it started out pretty good, but I guess like after a while the trimmer just kind of got like really really run down and just kind of sounded like it was gonna explode every time I used it, meaning like it would get super loud. And then quiet down, and then loud again, and then quiet and then, for no reason. Like it would just be so weird. So um, that kind of brought me to this uh, uh, whole thing about uh, YouTube in a way. Now it's not gonna. You're probably like, why does it make it to YouTube? Because when I buy gifts and when I shop for people, and you know, even myself too, when I shop for myself, um, I usually go to YouTube and uh, look up reviews. Uh, for products, whether it be electronics, uh, furniture, um, you know, uh, clothing, you know, anything. I, I usually go to YouTube and, and check out um, what people are saying about the product. You know, I'm trying to find like the best video possible. Hopefully that it's not like a, you know, a sponsored video with, with the, the actual, you know, product is sponsoring that person's video. Or if it's like got a lot of view, it's got a high view count, a uh, like ratio, and like you know just the the comments and the the actually get a full consensus of what people are actually saying about this product. And I, I noticed that when YouTube banned dislikes from being viewed for, to the public, because uh, I was like, why would you do that? Like um, a like to dislike ratio. In the terms of finding out of a video about like a product review or learning how to do something on like, you know, Premiere, Photoshop, those like dislike, you know, ratios indicate to me um, if the video is going to be helpful or not. If it's a helpful video, if it's going to be worth your time, if it's, you know, uh, useful, right? If it's if it, if it satisfies your your need for that purpose and all that, and it's just like, now that that's gone... It's harder to find out if a video is is worth my time to watch in that sense. Now I'm not talking about like a video of like about like a you know um um somebody you know a political thing or whatever like you know it's just stuff like that that is like you know it, it, you know, people can ratio things that they don't like whether it be like a political thing a, a politician a movie video game or whatever like something that's coming out right like a, there's like a um, people can downvote things to, you know, send a message and upvote things to send a message and all that. But really what happens with that is when you take that away, especially for videos that are like, you know, that could be used for use and all that. Like, again, like I said, Photoshop and Premiere, that just makes it so much harder for me to cipher through and do research and all that. When it was usually it used to be, all right, what's the likes and dislikes on this video on this product or this uh, this thing that I want to buy or this controller or this microphone or these headsets or whatever? And it's just like now it's like ugh, I'm now forced to either scrub through the comments or just kind of scrub through the, through the video and get a full consensus. It's like, I mean, and especially in this time and this this day and age, right, when time is so precious and we got a, a lot of shit to do, got a, more stuff to buy and all that, and we can't dilly dally around and our you know our daily lives are actually being you know affected by it and then it's it's just it's really a hindrance on that kind of thing and it might sound like i'm being kind of a baby right but i just feel like 
that was always a nice tool and a nice thing that I could just glance at and we could, um, you know, move on with our lives and just like, what's a video that can help me out and which one is like useless and which one is just there to get, you know, clicks and views and all that because it's weird because like the, you will have like a, a video back in the day of a tutorial or, or you know, a quick, a quick hack on something like on YouTube or whatever and it would have like so many mil- so many thousand uh views and like so many dislikes like so many people got baited into clicking on the video and then it just ended up being like a waste of time so it's like i no longer have that um visual cue to find out if this video is going to be helpful helpful or not and that's just you know it's kind of it's kind of uh it's kind of uh, what's it's it's, it's disappointing and it's infuriating. It's like, why Why would they do this? Like, honestly, like, I know it was because of, like, you know, ratioing things and, like, you know, people, maybe people getting bullied. But it's like, that shouldn't really matter to you or the company or whoever's posting that video. It's it's a way to show criticism and, like, dis, uh, and dislikes. And if, like, you don't have to like everything that, they you know, whoever puts out. Especially if you're doing it, like, to it be, I don't know, send them out a message, I don't know, it's just, it's just weird, but, um, I just w- wish that the likes were back, the dislikes were back, because it's just, it's just more helpful, it just helps me figure out in that, in that sense, what video is going to help me, and what video is not going to help me, you know, and people post, like, so many useless videos on YouTube all the time, you know, to just put them up there, hopefully to go viral, or to get traction, or whatever, get in the algorithm, or something like that, and then there's actual videos of people that make videos that people are trying to help people out and try to help make things easier and not stress out or try to be an, an outlet of information that uh, can help you when you're in your daily life or, you know, shopping. Yeah, I mean, uh, buy this mouse, not that mouse or, you know, buy uh, these are my top five mouses of like 2021 or whatever or something like that. Uh, but it's just it's, it's taken that the, the usefulness of the dislikes has been ripped apart because of i don't know who complained about it the most to get rid of it whether it be companies or um influencers or whoever but it's just like a it it was it was a nice mechanic that allowed me to use youtube in a more efficient way with a tool or with a feature that was already there from the beginning so it's like i kind of wish it was back and then you get all these ads about like youtube relate or google uh, products like um, Google Fi or the Google app that it's just like, oh, hey, if you if you want to, you know, if you're in an, another country and uh, you don't um, speak the language there, you can scan the menu of the restaurant that you're at. That way you don't have to talk to the person who's there to help you and to order or make your food and just use this and don't speak to any other human you've ever you know, you see ever again in another country if you don't speak their language. I don't know. I just feel like it's like I get that they 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 don't want you to seem like you're a naive person, but it's like being naive is only for that one second or that one you know interaction. You know, maybe you learn a little bit of that language through that person who's you know working that job or working that restaurant, and then you communicate better with them. It's like that trailer or that commercial or that ad it just spoke to me in such a weird weird way like we're going to create an app that you never have to talk to anybody else ever again it was just it it maybe that wasn't its intention but it just i just got that feeling like hey don't talk to this person use our app to figure out what's on the menu or um what is in 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 the food itself it's like i don't know if that's um what i want I mean, one of the main parts of like going out to eat is, is 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 the social interaction with people and uh, everybody else that's there. Uh, you, your friends, the waiter, the waitress. You know, it's it's all part of that social interaction. And I know that it's like you know they're working and all that, and they, you know, if if you are in, in another country, it's like that is very useful. But it's like it's almost like trying to not encourage uh human uh interaction i don't know i just got that weird vibe from it. it's like 
well, you can use your app for anything. You know, use your app for, you know, translating for, which is a very, very helpful, by the way. Right? It is helpful. But there's just something about communicating with somebody else in, 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 in you you build a connection with that person. Maybe they do speak the lang- uh, English or another language, you know, f- fairly little, right? And then you can kind of like joke around and kind of, you know, have fun with it or just like kind of like have a little bit of a re- uh, of a conversation with what they know, maybe help them out with some things. Maybe they teach you how to say something in their language and, and, and that translates to English. Like there's just so many things that that app is like that commercial was like in, like invoking like no don't talk to these people if you don't know the language just uh, or don't ask them what's on the menu because you can't understand their language it's like it's like that's almost like in a way like that's offensive but in my my eyes it's like well that's just how I'm trying to build a bit of a connection i understand that we don't have the language that you use but still I mean, we could probably, you know, bounce off each other fucking new I, new words and you teach me one thing, I teach you another, we get the food ordered, and yes, maybe somebody there could might speak English. That person comes in, there's a the, the triangle of interaction and stuff like that. We laugh it off like, oh, that's what you meant like that. It's like they Google and that ad is like, no, we don't want to have that at all. Just use the app and take a picture of the menu and we'll just translate it into English or whatever you speak. So it's like, I, the technology is great. I love it. I, I truly do. The internet the internet is a fantastic, fantastic um, tool. But at some point, we can't lose sight of what we are. We are these very sophisticated um, very, at times, very primalistic animals, but also very intelligent and capable of building internet, building the internet and building machinery and building things that make it easier for us to live our lives that we think that is easier. You know, we we think that easier is less contact with people, right? I mean, it's like in an every, everyday life. Like, I just order things from, from Amazon. I don't have to go to a store or get into my car or talk to a, uh, somebody at the store or talk to a manager or anything. I just I, I hit place in cart and order, and it's just it arrives at your door with absolutely no human interaction, and then you go about your day. Like it's just it's it's we I, again it's great technology is amazing, but we can't lose sight of of what we are in this moment. We are very we are creatures that require others around us to survive. We're not lone wolves. We're not, um, you know, other animals that don't require a lot of a community. We require a community for humans to achieve greatness and for us to feel um, at our safest, I guess you can say. Because if you're by yourself and you're just like with nobody else, I mean, you don't get that same um, safetyness, I would say, or safe feeling that you would with a community of people that you know and trust. So we're... We're not meant to be secluded or, or, you know, away from people or just, you know, not even having any human uh, connection. We're, we're meant to converse and to talk with people and to interact with a lot of people. And, and, and even though, like, you know, in, nowadays with technology, we have text, we have phones, we have FaceTime, we have Instagram, we have Facebook, we have Twitter. It just seems like nowadays, even though we're so connected with our phones and all that, we're really not. We're just not as connected as you can be. Unless you're like FaceTiming or Zooming every day for everything that you do. I mean, kind of, yeah, but it's not as, it's not the same as face-to-face interaction. It's just not. And it's just, we got to be careful with the internet. We got to be careful with, with social media. You got to be careful with technology. And like, I'm not here to preach. I just thought that that commercial was like a, a big like, whoa, what is this? You don't want us to talk to the person who has the restaurant what if they do speak your language what if you can get by i mean sure it's great for like a little bit of a tool but i mean are you really not gonna say um what is this what is that it's just it's it's human nature to ask questions and to communicate with people it's like almost like they want to suppress that and just use the app 
I don't know. That's just it rubbed me the wrong way. That's what I'll say. It just it's just, it just kind of rubbed me rubbed me the wrong way, and I was just like kind of like I'm not sure if I'm ready for that. Truly, I'm not. Uh, but that's just me. I'm I'm just a big social animal. I just I enjoy conversing and talking to people and saying, you know, how you doing? Like I've said in previous podcasts, I enjoy talking to whether it be like a clerk or a waitress or somebody serving me or anybody anybody like that. I just I enjoy stirring up conversation. I know th- that they're working on that. I know that their job is not to um, be distracted and all that, but it's just I can't help it. I truly can't help it. It's a it's a blessing and also a curse. But I think in, in, in the long sight, we should really focus on more verbal and face-to-face communication with uh, everything. It really does. It, it's because we think that, um, you know, tweets just can can come across uh, as it's like it's in print, right? It's in it's in type. It's in type or, or print. Sorry. It's printed. It's 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 in it's in uh, it's just plastered onto that, you know, that website. And you don't re- get really much of a um, a tone of that tweet. You don't really see their intent. Sometimes, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. But until you really meet the person and you see them and you interact with them, then you're like, oh, okay, I kind of see like how you are. It's almost like back in the day, whenever you would text somebody, right, and then they would text you in a way that you didn't know that they thought that way, right? It's like you speak to me in a different way that you text me. Why do you do that? Is it because you're not with me? Is it because you don't see me? Is it because you think that because you're behind this keyboard that you can just, you know, become whatever you want? I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's like it's translated into that from texting now into social media and like, and even into other things, you know, further down the line. It's just, it's gotten to that point where it's like, we're not really seeing who people are truly are if we don't really actually talk to them. Um, it's like because like if you see somebody on social media, you know somebody that you know say something like, you know tweet something stupid or dumb or, or you know uh, not like them, you know maybe you'll be concerned like hey what do you mean by this, or why did you say tweet this or why do you why do you sound like the way that you are, or the why do you tweet the way that you tweet, and then you're you're like oh well I just thought of this and like you know it's just a tweet, well yeah it's just a tweet but it's like you know. It just it just seems so out of you, out of you, and not what you would say, and it's like what uh, what makes you think that it's, you know, you can tweet whatever you want, but if you know the person and they tweet this, it's like, yo, what's going on here? You know, I I know you pretty well, I know what you like, I know what you dislike, and it's like, well, it's like what 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 what's what is this? It's like they're a different person online. And it's like, that used to be way back in the day with, again, texting and and chat rooms and all that. And now it's just kind of evolved to, like, this biggest, the biggest chat room that we have in the world, which is now Twitter. Which is, you know, essentially Twitter. So it's like, I truly, I'm not, again, I'm not a scientist. I'm not an expert on, like, online personalities or online, you know, divergence of reality or, you know disbanding reality when it comes to online personalities or online features or online websites but it's just i don't know it's just kind of curious got my mind thinking like what the hell does this even mean like what's happening here it's just uh, i'm just really 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 confused at some people at some sometimes it's just i think it's just because the 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 culture that we live in today and being on social media is just like kind of made molded us into this type of thing Think of this. It's almost like we're headed. We we're actually heading into the, into the direction of the future, in which Wall-E takes place in the movie Wall-E, where you can have everything delivered, everything at your fingertips, and just like sit in a chair and roll around and not really do anything. You know, much of anything. It's, we're kind of like in that direction, and it's just kind of bizarre. It's like the more you th- when you saw it, you're like, we're not heading there. There's no way anybody's gonna do that. But now it's like, you know, with since the sense of, you know, since the past year with the whole quarantine thing and then more things just becoming more remote and then more think more apps and more the Google app can do anything. You can translate your shit. You could do math problems on it. You can do this. You can do that. It's like, whoa, whoa. becoming lazier and lazier. And then you're just like, well, uh, do you want to go hang out? Uh, we can just chat on Zoom or do this instead of. It's like, oh no. 
and then you're just like, oh my god. I mean, it's like one of the one things that that's um also that's been like a, a big a big teller of that is like movie releases. When when the when the movies on HBO Max and then theaters, it's like there's just a big chunk of people that just don't want to leave their house and just want to watch it at their at their home. It's like now you're losing that social, you know, interaction with people, the 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 the, the merchant or the cashier, the snack bar, the ticket sales, the box office, your friends if you invite them. It's like you're losing all that. Now you can invite your friends to your house, but it's like it's just it, you got to it's it's not the same as going out and going somewhere and actually watching a movie with other people. It's just it, the the social actual social, you know, life is is falling. And it's like it's just it's slowly just going away. And it's not like the fucking Amazon's going to make like actual stores or actual like, you know, like places that you can actually go buy stuff. No, they're just going to say, you know, buy everything on Amazon, Google or uh, Uber, um, DoorDash, Uber Eats, uh, Amazon, Target, Walmart. They all have online um, availability. So you can just get everything delivered. It's like, shit. As much as it's as much as it is very very nice and convenient, it's also a hindrance. It's also you could do this way too much and not get enough of the real world out there. And the, and just you you have to remember that there is a world out there. There is people, other people out there doing other things. You know, being outside and stuff like that, and doing other things and talking to people, and just actually talking to people face to face, and saying, "Hey, how are you?" I'm good, you know, it's fine, you know, stuff like that, getting to know people, and like, again, one of the biggest tellings of this is you just watch Seinfeld, and how much in that show, they move around, they go to this place, they go to that place, they talk to this person, they talk to that person, they they have multiple friends, whether it be like a, you, you just like a, you know, they go to a restaurant, they go to a movie theater, they go to this, they go to that, it's just a bunch of communication, which is sadly, you know, is just evaporating. It's just going away in that sense. Even back then they talked on the phone. Who, when was the last time you, like, you talked on the phone to somebody that's not like your actual, like, that's not like your mom, your dad. That's somebody like, you know, that's like, you know, just had a chat on the phone with somebody. That's not like super close to you. Right? It's always like a text. It's always like a DM. It's always like a a post or something like that. It's just, just it's very, it's, I don't know. I don't know, it's just getting weird. Um, But moving on, though, moving on. Another story in the news that kind of broke, I would say, a few days ago was this thing on the moon. It's, 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 it's crazy because it, the Chinese rover that's on the moon, that that's like, it's been there for the past two years, Chinese U-2-2 rover, uh, it's U2, and then the number two rover has been roaming across the Von Karman crater on the far side of the moon. On its journey, it spotted a mysterious cube-shaped object. Now, there's not much on it. We just know that there's going to be... Uh, the, the Chinese rover is going to take, like, take like about two to three months to get there and analyze the data and really see what is over there. And, you know, to just kind of like check it out which is kind of bizarre because why would it take two to three months to do that um this article is saying like it's like about 260 feet away yeah it's like it's not even that far away so it's like what hold on let me let me let me just read this so i don't get uh any details mixed up by the way this is on us usa today so according to the space.com the chinese uh the china national space administration keeps a log of each of, of the rover's lunar days which is around 29 Earth days, according to uh, NASA. On its 36th lunar day, the rover spotted a cube-shaped object on the horizon about 260 feet away. So it's not even that far away. You can just kind of walk there, and you'll be there. And not to say that it's going to be, you know, an actual, you know, thing of, like, you know, sparking um, innovation or, like, an actual thing that's, like, well, could this be a UFO? Could this be something, some kind of material? Could this be some kind of you know, metallic um, mineral or something like that. I, we don't know what it is. A structure, maybe. Now, I know we shouldn't really, really be uh, uh, concerned. I mean, it's not like it's going to be... It's not like there's going to be, like, a new alien race there. Like, this is their house or something like that. Or maybe, like, an outpost. But it's it's still... It's concerning. At least for me. It's like, why would there be a cube there? A cube-shaped object. Like, why would... Like, that, that, that just seems so... 
so random and so bizarre. Like, and I've seen photos of it. Like, it, it, it truly, it's not a rock. It's like there's there's actually something there. Now, whether it be like some kind of technology that we put there way long ago, maybe something broke off or something, maybe something that we just never seen before, that we've, you know, a new part of the moon that we've never really explored, maybe. But it's like if it's so close to, you know, our, you know, our planet, right? It's our moon. Like, I want to know what that is. And I, I was like, dude, Elon, what are you doing? Go up there like tomorrow and check that out right now. Like, what are you doing? You have to have telescopes, right? Like on Earth that you can actually see what it is besides this bullshit grainy ass photo that the Chinese rover took. Like, come on, what, like, what is what is this shit? I mean, there's got it. We have to have more information on this. Like, this is this is not this is not something to take lightly. I think. I mean, we just got to go fast and hard. I mean, come on. I mean, if a cube is on the moon, now I, immediately I thought it was the all all spark. From Transformers, I was like, "What? The cube is on the moon?" But then, then again, it's like two to three months to get there. What are you? What are we talking about? Why does it take two to three months to see what it is? Like, what is that? Immediately, I was like, "Elon, get up there right now, please. Do something, NASA, please, anybody." Now, I'm sure that they, if. <laughs> I'm sure that there's details that the Chinese government and and NASA have agreed. Like, if we see something, if we see something before you and we claim it, then you cannot intercept. And if we if you do, we're going to, you know, maybe respond with either violence or suing or money or whatever. Right. I'm sure that there's something about that, like that, that that you can't just swoop in on 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 another country's discovery. Right. It's like we've got to we call it's like they call dibs. They call dibs like they 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 can no longer <clears throat> um, set foot on that uh, discovery, which is kind of it, it makes sense. But it's like, damn it, dude, what the fuck were we doing? But it's like we have telescopes, we have satellites, we have satellites on uh, telescopes on those satellites. Why are we not seeing more shit? Why are we not? Why are we not seeing reporting or publishing anything new that we see on the moon? I just feel like the moon is just such a, it's 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 like gotten like so like covered up nowadays by like other things like Mars and like other things like that. It's like well the moon is right there. I mean like I'm sure we haven't discovered or explored every crevice or every bit of surface of the moon, every crater. Like what are we doing? Come on. And it's just like how is this thing just there and we've never seen it before? And it's like obviously it's not a rock. And I mean like if you if you look at these images and you're like. That's a rock. You're just you're, you're you're just like probably like so, you know, mad that there's something new or that there's something that potentially might be interesting, but it's like it's not to what you're studying. You're like it's a rock. It's just a rock. It's like ugh, these people, man. Some people just want to never progress in any form of study, and space is one of them when it comes to materials or stuff we see that's not normal that we know and we just classify it as oh it's an asteroid oh it's a meteor it's like well we don't know that yet shouldn't we um, study this to see if it actually is one or not instead of you know categorizing it as an asteroid or a meteor or a rock or something like that when it turn when it comes to the moon now th- there's just some people out there that have books published that have studies completed, that solidifies one study, but then other uh, there will be something that comes around that might potentially debunk it or put it in, you know, put it into some question or something like that. And it's like, whoa, no, it's just this. It's like, I mean, we have to remember us as humans. Yes, and I, it's going back to the part of being a social animal. And now we we're, we're talking about now competition. What what I say is true. What you say is false because I think that I'm right. And the thing is, I want to be right. I want to be right. I don't want to be wrong. I mean, who in the right mind right mind, would want to be wrong about anything? I sure don't. But it's like, when it comes to science and exploration, you got to, you know, be like, okay, well, we can see things every day that can be potentially new things. And we just got to, you know, attack it knowing that it's not going to step over my credentials or I'm not going to be, you know, hurt because 
I was wrong or what I was working on for a couple years is turns out to be not true or not entirely true. And it's like, because, you know, science is a community run by people and people are, again, like I said, social and competitive, competitive animals in that same space. And it's like that combination, right, right there is I, what I feel kind of holds humanity back in a way. Like we might have one thing, but we don't, we might have, we have one thing, but this new thing hovering around might, might prove that that one thing that we had is not entirely accurate. So we might have to change some things. No, I worked on that for 20 years, um, and it's right. I have a Nobel Peace Prize. I have my degrees. I have my certificates. I have it all. I have my paycheck. Nope, we cannot um, We cannot go into that. It's like, bro, you're, you're literally hindering and going against science in general. How it's never, it, it, it changes a lot. And not just, you know, this, but a lot of science changes. It's like, shit. History can change. Like, we, the only reason that we, we, we think that, you know, the, 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 the dinosaurs were as old as they were, or these dinosaurs existed in this time period, is because we probably haven't dug deep enough or dug in the right, in the right locations. And we find other things like other dinosaurs or other fossils or other animals that might have lived here, or shit like that. It's like, we just got to keep digging deeper or digging more. It's like, we haven't it's like the ocean too you got to keep going deeper to find more things you can't just cut it off at one point because you got lazy or you made money it's like no you got to keep going keep keep on treading keep diving go deeper you have to go deeper it's like and then it's just it becomes like a thing like we settle for okay we settle for that's good enough we don't want greatness most people settle at a certain point, like, oh, that's good enough for me. That's fine. I'm okay where I'm at now. Or that's okay for now. We, we don't need to do any more work. And that's also part of being a human is we get tired. We get lazy. We can't really maintain focus on one thing for that long. You know, I mean, we, we can, but after a certain point, you get tired. You get bored. You become disinterested and you move on to another thing. And it's like, that's all that's also a part of humanity though. We have not quite gotten to the point where we can just maintain that kind of focus for that that long. We have families, we have jobs, we have friends, we have other things that we want to do. Like I'm sure, you know, as much as the best scientist in the world is so smart and he works so hard and is he loves what he does, I guarantee you that that same person enjoys, you know, if he enjoys vacation enjoys sports, enjoys his friends, enjoys his family even more, even probably even more than his actual job. And we'll take breaks and we'll you know might not give it all the effort in, in every aspect of his job be just because of his family, his friends, what he loves to do. It's just part of hum, human nature. We're not perfect. We're just not. And it's just like, we live in a world where we want to, people want to be perfect, but we're not. We can't be. It's impossible. Things things are wrong. We, we're wrong on math. We're wrong on science. We're wrong on history. We're wrong on a lot of things. And it's just, we have to overcome that. We have to say, okay, I was wrong. Or maybe I could have done a little bit more work there. Or I didn't go that deep as I probably should have. But... It's just it's it's just part of being a human, though. We have not yet evolved to being a, a species where we don't care so much about materialistic things or that much of a social interaction or being liked or being um, uh, right about things or being loved. We're just not there yet. Uh, I don't think that we'll be there for an, another millennia if we exist that long. Like, we just, we don't have that in our brain to to not be looked at and liked. We crave that. We want that. We love it. We're not there yet where we don't care about that yet. Once we, once we lose that, once we, once that evolves out of our brain, that we don't crave that likeliness, that, uh, that, that, that community embrace that we love by your family, 
your job, your whatever you do, your hobby, your the scientific community, whatever you are part of, once we evolve out of that, then I truly believe that humanity can do what anything that they want in terms of science, in terms of art, in terms of just, you know, flat out communication with others. Because how many times do you, you just stop talking to people after you do disagree with something or you get criticized or they say like, you know what, maybe what you did wasn't the best thing that you could possibly have done in that situation. Maybe you could have done this instead. And I'm not saying it's like a, you know, a, a, a life changing thing that you did. Maybe you just didn't study well for a test. Maybe you got a bad grade and your teacher's like, you know, if you studied more, you could have gotten an A and not a B plus. And how do you respond to that? Do you shut them down? Do you do you ignore them? Do you drop the class? Do you quit going to school? Do you quit? I mean, what do you do? No, you got to take that criticism and just go forward and realize that it's not it's not all about you. You can be wrong. I mean, it's not all about your dignity and your pride. You can be wrong. And if you're wrong, you should admit you're wrong and say, you know what? I was wrong. I'll do better. Or let's work together. Or let's try to do something that, you know, that'll benefit everybody else and move on from there because that 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 is truly that that'll be truly true 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 human uh unity if we can get past like the or the the selfishness and the selfishness of uh you know uh, um that we that everybody has everybody has selfishness everybody does and maybe to the fact that you know what if if china does see this rover can the u.s come help and we not start a fucking world war three can we all come in and help out the you know humanity as one and put the differences aside of, of the US, China, Russia, whatever other countries that you know tend to be butting heads for literally about everything and anything. So it's like but you know we're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're not yet at Star Trek or Halo uh in, in terms of sci-fi worlds yet. We're not there yet. We're just not. Um, but what will get us there? Will it be uh, natural that we just start loving each other and start wanting to work together? Probably not. It'd probably take a disaster to happen. Um, a big war, destruction, alien invasion. <laughs> um, even though that'd be, you know, in a way, terrible and also pretty cool. Um <laughs> pull an Independence Day and just unite as a, as the planet, as human beings. It's, it's going to take something catastrophic because I don't see anybody... I don't see anybody wanting to hug somebody who disagrees with anybody, especially... And, and, and the internet just makes that even more prominent. I mean, if, if you think that fighting somebody face-to-face, -face, you know, shouting and debating and arguing is bad, online it's even worse. That's kind of like how, why you kind of tie it all back together of the dislike button be probably disappearing. It's just a disagreement, and you're right, and I'm wrong, that that mentality. But it's, it's just got to, you know, hope that it doesn't actually come to a disaster or a catastrophe where that we actually have to be united. And uh, through a circumstance that'll probably be very devastating. We just gotta hope that's not the case. I I really hope that it's not because that'll be, that'll be a, like I said, catastrophic. I was kind of deeper than I thought it would be, but a little bit of a chat there about humanity. Speaking of humanity, um, Halo Infinite got its campaign out, um, and I've played a few missions already. I've played the first three, and I have to say I absolutely love this game. The campaign, at least. I, I love it. I enjoy it so much. It's a whole lot of fun. The story's really well done. The characters are, pr are really good. The story itself and what's happening and the overarching plot and the antagonists are really interesting. I've felt like that. Uh, I haven't been this interested in the 343 Halo game in a while. Maybe since Halo, f Halo 4 was interesting because it was a continuation of Halo 3, which I didn't think was going to happen. But then, and then, then Halo Five came around, and I was just like, I was like, that entire time of Halo Five, I was like, why are we not playing as Chief? Where's Chief? Well, what's what's happening? Well, what's going on? I don't know these people. I don't, I don't know anything about them really much. There's not much 
um, said about them or that you can find that you have to research or read or whatever. It's just like, what? who are these people, right? And now we get back to Halo Infinite, right? And it's been marketed as Chief being becoming Hope, becoming the Master Chief again, kind of harkening back to the old days of Halo, you know, the Halo 1, 2, and 3 at least. And it's, I gotta say, it's just, it's so nice to finally play a game that actually feels that they put effort into the story, the characters, and it all having purpose, and it all making kind of pretty good sense, too. Like, as you know, the Banisher, the the main bad guy in this game, no longer, uh, at least from what I played, no longer the Prometheans. So in that, in my mind, that's a plus. Um, but I immediately, because you don't play against the Banished in other Halo games, except Halo Wars 2, I believe. And I haven't played that. And it, for somebody who hasn't played that or doesn't know anything about them, it's a great introduction to who they are and what their purpose is and what their, um, what's their goal. So it's like, it's great because it, it, it's like you're playing in, you always do this, but like it's like you're viewing the Banished from the perspective of the Master Chief, which is like pretty much the same thing. Like It's like you don't know who they are. And the characters around him, too. So it's like, it's it's a good way to tell a story, especially if you haven't played Halo Wars 2. And I love it. I'm, I'm loving it so far, and it's just been a lot of fun. Like I said, I'm three three missions in, and I can't wait to go back and play it, because it really is, it's, 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 it's it feels like classic Halo, but bigger, on a bigger scale. Because if you remember, they're going to put more of a, like an open world feel to it, a little bit more of a... Um, discovery and exploration and all that in it. And it's just, it's it's really, for me so far, after three missions, it's super, super good. I really, really love it. And hopefully it hopefully it can it can go on that path and conti- continue to be good. Um, but staying in the realm of Halo, it's, uh, I've, I've come to this, I've, I've come to a point in time that I have to actually talk about this and actually get my opinion out there on what I actually think of this uh, Halo Infinite multiplayer monetization and what it comes to the Battle Pass, when it comes to unlocking things and, and the store and uh, cosmetics and all that. And I've, 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 I've gathered thoughts, and this has been out, the, the, the multiplayer has been out since, you know, publicly free for everybody with Game Pass to play since November 15th. So just shy of a month of playing uh, Infinite multiplayer. And um, it's very clear to me and to a lot of people that they're not a, not big fans of this battle pass, the XP given out, the monetization. Just not a really big fan of it. And it's it's not just me. A lot of my friends have felt this way too. My brother, my brothers as well. And uh, it just kind of feels like overall, it becomes more more and more grindier the more you play, and the more you. Uh, the more games that you play. Because if you remember when it first came out, the the way you got XP was you complete challenges. And every day, I think every game that you would play, you would get 50 XP. And every level of the tier list of every bat- of the battle pass, at least, uh, is 1,000 XP points. And you would just get 50 automatically for completing any game that you play. Any game. Big Team Battle, uh, Slayer, 4v4 4 Slayer, Capture the Flag, uh, uh, Ranked, you name it, anything that's available in the Halo Infinite multiplayer uh, catalog. So that's that. And um, since we know this, since that's that's it's already been reverted by uh, it's to it's actually been upgraded to a way where at certain games when you start, uh, the first game is like I believe three hundred XP. The next two are two hundred XP. The next two after that are hundred XP each. Then after you play like about five games. <coughs> It goes back to 50 XP. <clears throat> so it's an improvement, but it's not quite there yet. And notice I said that it's just 50 XP after completing a game. That's it. There's no performance XP. You, you get like a couple double kills. You go positive. You you win the game. You, you break kill records. You get a multi-kill. You get triple kills. You get all this. You get hijacks. You get splatter sprees. You get... Um, Tank kills, warthog kills, you get wasp kills, banshee kills, ghost kills. You, none of that even matters. You score a flag, you keep the ball for this many minutes. It doesn't even matter in this game. 
doesn't matter. Uh, your performance doesn't matter. You just get a set XP for every game that you complete. Now, I, I don't know any game that I've ever played that's ever done this, where it, it just takes out your performance XP. There's not... And it's not like it's like a bad game to play. It's really, really fun. It's super fun. I've already said that before. So, when you have a fun game like that, that everybody likes, everybody wants to play, you you naturally want to get better. You naturally want to improve or cut out all the bad things that you do and, and try to be better and try to perform better. Be a better teammate, get more kills, um, play the objective more, you know, just just get better at the game in general. Having that not even in the game just put it just makes my heart sink because no other game that I've ever played multiplayer with a battle pass with any monetization any anything like this it, they've never taken out performance XP until this one that I've played that I have played no COD no Battlefield no Fortnite no PUBG nothing like that and it's 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 weird because the game is so fun. You want to keep playing, but it's not going to anything. It's like a big, empty reward. It's just emptiness. And it's 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 sad because it is so fun. It's not just me either, because people who play Quick Play, Big Team Battle, Ranked, they all sort of feel the same way. Because you can tell. In a game, whether it be Slayer, Capture the Flag, Big Team Battle... Uh, strongholds, you know, power seeds, whatever it may be. There just seems to be this, after a couple games, people just start, stop giving a shit. And we'll just play it, they'll troll, they'll maybe focus on their challenges a little too much because that's all that they can get, and just kind of just dilly around, games feel like they just slow down and just kind of become a stalemate and just kind of wither away or just get dragged out that you just want the game to end because you're not going to get any XP if you do good or if you win or anything like that you just get the 50 bon- the 50 you know automatic and then get out and it's become it's be- it's come to my attention that that's happening to me right now once i complete my challenges once i do the XP and get the max i can get for that day i just don't even care anymore like we play in a game and it just it feels it feels it's still fun but it's like, what are we doing here? Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. And just people, people will drag it out or something like that because they're just so unmotivated to continue to play well and to continue to actually play the game well. Because I can't tell you how many times that people just troll in the games because there's no benefit for them to be play well. And then you get people that just don't care. You get bad teammates and you get bad games and you just get stalemates and... It's just, it, it becomes just a hassle and a chore almost to just grind to get this stupid 50 basic XP every game that you complete. Now, I'm not sure if they intended this because the Battle Pass is, is it, it, first of all, the Battle Pass is, when it first came out, it was like around maybe like 160 days of a Battle Pass, I think, maybe even more. But it's a pretty big Battle Pass. Usually like COD Battle Passes or for Call of Duty are like, they're like usually like maybe a ninety to sixty to like ninety days maybe max, which is like it's 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 a long time but not as long as a Halo one. I mean this one is just like literally like almost half a year. It's like what the hell is going on here? Now I think the way the, why they did this though is because they need to they need time to create more content for the next season, like season two when they because they already marketed that it's going to be more seasons and all that. So it's like there's going to be a season one which right now, which is the Heroes of Reach, and then there's going to be another season within like I think it's in May. So already like mid, close to mid next year, is when the second season of Halo Infinite, Halo Infinite's can, uh, multiplayer is going to be out. So it's like what? I mean, if that's really the reason why it's so painful now, and and it's like well you got, if you you can just spend money to complete the battle pass now, but it's like the reason why they did that is because they made it free to play. Because if you don't make it free to pl- to play, you probably aren't going to get this insanely stupid XP drip or this this super pricey and super cosmetically driven um uh store that that makes you literally buy 
buy stuff to get the coolest armor and the coolest skins out there. And let's be honest, Halo back in the day, you know, up until Halo 5, or up until Halo Infinite, had probably the best customization in any game. You can choose any color for any, your Spartan, a secondary color, you can make your emblem, you can do, you they, in MCC they brought in calling cards and all that, title cards, and more options for emblems and colors and all that, and different customizations and different patterns and different combinations. Now, it's just limited to coatings, where it's like a set coating for your Spartan, and you and, and then that's it. There's no tweaking, there's no tinkering with your colors, none of this, none of that, and it's just very, like, and then they have, in the store, you can buy colors, you can buy armor pieces, you can buy skins for your weapons, you can buy stickers for your weapons, your vehicles, and it's just like, I don't want to spend any money for this. Like, if you if you just made the game, you you made it so much fun, right, that people would have enjoyed and wouldn't, would not um, care if there were some things that you had to buy, but you made so many things that you have to buy, and you made the, the XP so slow and so mind-numbingly, like, I'm not even, like, ma- making a dent. It's like, it just, it's just like, I don't even want to play it now. Because it's just so slow and so, and some of the challenges you can't even really complete unless you get lucky with the slot machine uh, 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 quick play lobbies. Because they're not even set. There's no section to play Slayer. There's no section to play Capture the Flight. There's no section to play Audible. You have to get lucky and hopefully you get it. And that just makes it even longer and longer. And because if you don't get it, you quit out, you get banned for for a few minutes. It's just like, what are we doing now? <clears throat> and it's not just that because it, let's say you have a challenge like you got to get like five shots, five kills with a cinder shot. Well, good news or bad news is that the cinder shot doesn't always appear on every map at the same in the same mode or in the same time. <coughs> The power the power weapons are they spawn randomly not randomly but they they're randomly set to every map randomly so you can go with a couple games and you have the cinder shot on one map and then the next couple games the cinder shot will not be there it'll be a different gun and it's randomly so you can't even really you can't really determine what if you're going to be able to get, complete that challenge and then you have to either swap it out, which are in the Battle Pass, which you can only get if you progress in it, or you buy it. And you can also buy, you can buy swaps too, you know, in the in the store. So it's like, it, it's a it's a fantastic game play game, like, right? It's, it's great. But the monetization and the Battle Pass and the progression is just, it's really, it's just like, you could tell they're like, we got to make our money back right now because we're putting this game out for fucking free day one on Xbox Game Pass. And then you're like, well, what's going to make it? What's going to make it? Uh, How are they going to make their money back? Is it just going to be Game Pass purchases and and subscriptions? No, idiot. (laughs) They have this fucking gigantic store there where you can just spend all your goddamn money and just fucking keep spending because it looks cool. Keep spending because you want that armor piece. Keep spending because you want that armor coating. It's like, oh, God. Like, it is so crazy. And you're probably going to say, Alex, it's just... It's just uh, cosmetics. It's it doesn't help you. It's not like Battlefront Two where you actually are better, or it's not like any other game where like you need it or something. But motherfucker, nowadays in games, cosmetics is what drives every game now. It's it's the best thing because it's like it's like you go shopping for clothes, but in that video game, and they have made it so like. You can have such cool armor sets and cool colors and cool stuff for your guns and cool shit like that where it's so it's the number one draw nowadays for gamers is cosmetics and customization of your character. That is the number one. You can't just say it's just cosmetic. You can't. Because they have gun gone so gung ho with customizations and making it all about you and the way you look and that you look badass when you when you're playing slayer that you look badass guarantee you if they didn't have that in their mind we would still be red versus blue 
Guarantee you. If they didn't, because that's what I was saying about the Master Chief Collection, because it's like, I do enjoy customizing my, my Spartan. I really do. But if it's going to be so pay-driven, it's like, I... <laughs> I, I can't get on board with that. I, I, I don't want to spend that much money on that. And the fact that it's all the cool shit's not even in the battle pass. Some of it's just you got to buy. It's like, oh, yuck. I'm not in. I'm not doing that. It's just a big turnoff. It's just a big, big, big turnoff. And it's like they can't even put in SWAT because that game completes way too quickly, which will mean that people fucking can farm that XP and burn through that battle pass even faster because you notice that they don't have a playlist for Slayer which is basic team deathmatch or SWAT which is just headshots in a quick fast paced game because they don't want you to burn through it so fast because they gotta work on season 2 now that's good for them but and this could be because of the the pandemic constraint restraints because of you know working from home and all that it could be that but it's just it's it's not it's not really it's not fun all the time to play halo multiplayer it's fun at the beginning and with those challenges it can be fun but once those are done it's really just a chore now and it feels like a it feels like it just it feels like a job and it feels like a grind a job that you hate that's what it feels like and it, the the fact that there's no XP for your performance is truly mind-boggling. It's truly mind-boggling. I, I I can't remember any game that took out XP that took out your performance XP. I I just I can't. I I don't. I, I it it goes against everything that we love about those games. Getting try, trying to get better and trying to improve. And right now there's like really pretty much like no reason for anybody to even give a shit about the, it, playing those games or, or getting good. There truly is no reason to give a shit. And 343, if you're listening, now you probably aren't, but you have to change this. You, you it's, it's, it's putting a, it's, it's, it's putting a, a, a limitation on a game that truly is, is the funnest Halo game, in my opinion, since Halo 3. And it's being held back. It's just being held back. And I don't want that. You don't want that either. Because you had to gain so much trust back from the community and the fans who who you, that you lost from back with Halo 5 and all that. And even Halo 4. You have that back. You have a solid campaign so far. Very, very, very solid. I love it. You have a great multiplayer at, at its core. You do. At its core, the gameplay, the gunplay... The movement, the maps, they're all great. But we just need that. The sprinkle on top. The performance XP. The better monetization. The better battle pass. Really, it all comes down to the XP. Because if you get more XP, you can get more shit in the battle pass faster. And like I, get, like I said, that might be their plan because they're working on Season 2. Because it'll take longer. Because of pandemic restraints. But it's just like, maybe be more open about it. Maybe be more understanding. Admit that this wasn't the the best decision, right? You got, you have to admit that you're wrong. You, you are in this case. You're you're one hundred percent wrong. You, you are. Just just admit it. That helped me to help you. Help me understand why you did it. You know, it's just like this is where the communication breaks. This is why this is why we communication is so key. And it's necessary for our, our species and everybody here to survive and to move on and to be better in making stuff. And I know it's all about money and, and they need to make money and they put it for free free on the Game Pass and they, day one, I would have been perfectly fine paying for this game if they did not put it on Game Pass. Perfectly fine. And, that, you know, maybe because it's the climate... Maybe a lot of people and a lot of younger people don't like Halo or don't even really know Halo or are questioning, well, does it have a battle royale? I mean, you get that a lot, and especially because the battle royale genre has really made made some people, some gamers, so brain dead when it comes to their gaming experiences. That they just want battle royale, and that's it. And the fact that they don't have a battle royale, it, to me, is like saying, like, well, we don't want to 
take that road yet. Or we might later, but not right now. We we need to we need to get our fans back. And I I applaud you for that, but this was not the way to do it. It might have been in in back in 2019 or 2020 when you thought about this with the but now it just feels like it's it wasn't the right move. It just wasn't the right move. And you know, you can improve. You can improve. I believe that you will. You have to be listening. You you can't be just sitting on your couches or sitting on your pile of money that you've already made from other microtransactions and be like, "Okay, we succeeded." You you can't. There's that that's no way to keep a business running or keep a product as as great as it can be or keep, you know, fans pleased or the people that you know, support you and and all that. Build the community. Build the community. Communicate. Let's talk. What can we do to improve? What can we do better that we were wrong about? They just got to be better as a whole. We really, really do. I think that you can do it. I truly do. But you got to admit that you're wrong. I don't think that they've admitted that they are wrong. Remember back in the day with Battlefront 2, they actually put out a statement that they were wrong. I don't think that 343 has done that yet, but they do acknowledge that the that we are unhappy with the the XP and the microtransactions and the armor coding and all that. Because let me tell you folks, it gets bad. Because there'll be certain coats of of, of for you know your Spartan that are just locked to one type of Spartan. Because you have a Spartan 5, right from Halo Reach. Spartan 7 from Halo 4 and 5, and then you have a Samurai Spartan. Now, if you unlock a color, it might just be for one of those Spartans. So, that also just kind of just makes me even more mad, because it's like, now I gotta buy three versions of that one thing that I already have to buy. It's like, whoa. But I believe that they will get there. I believe that you've already made your money, right? People have already bought it. I haven't, but people have already bought the shit in your store. Hopefully you made some cash back. Hopefully you did, because a lot of people were playing Halo. A lot of people were playing Halo back when it, in November when it first launched. A lot of people. So maybe you made enough money to, you know, kind of cut back on the cost a little bit, maybe. But why would you, right, if they're going to continue to buy it? I'm talking to you, player. You, gamer. Don't do it. I know we love the game. I know we love it. And you're doing it to support them. But this just isn't the right way to do it. It's just not the right way. And deep down, you don't like it. You don't like it. It's not a good fit. It's not a good look. It's just not, it's just, it, you're not, it's just not the right way. It feels like a phone game sometimes. It feels like a phone game. And, you know, Fortnite did it. PUBG did it. Warzone did it. Doesn't mean you have to do it. I mean, sure, it's 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 there. That model is there. It works. Yeah, I, I agree. It does work. But it's like, I, I don't know. It's just, it truly does suck that games are like this. It truly does. I don't want to seem like I'm totally sad, but I'm just like, we could be better. <laughs> we all could be better. Yeah, that's it about Halo. I don't want to depress you anymore about this. And I hope we, I, I, I truly think that you should, you know, if you haven't tried it out, try it out. Try to play it because if you were a fan back in the day, you you will have a smile on your face when you play it because it is incredibly incredibly fun. Like I said, the best Halo multiplayer since Halo Three, in my opinion. Um, but moving on, moving on to the NFL week, week thirteen already wrapped, guys. We are we are four weeks away, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. Four weeks left of football, and then we're done for the. Done for the year. Coming down coming down to the wire fast. Let's just talk about these games real quick and then we'll be I'll send you on your way. Uh the Cowboys beat the Saints twenty seven to seventeen. Pretty rough game for uh, the Saints. They have no quarterback, they have no answer, they have no Alvin Kamara, they have Taysom Hill sucked. Um probably go back to Trevor Simeon and just try to gut it out the rest of the games, but it's just that, that I mean, once they lost Jameis, man, that was it for them. It was just over. Uh, the Buccaneers beat the Falcons 30-17. to The Falcons actually made it competitive, but the Buccaneers are just so damn good, 
And Matt Ryan just continues to suck, man. I mean, we can probably quit on this experiment, on this dream that Matt Ryan will be back to Super Bowl Super Bowl year Matt Ryan because it's not going to happen anymore. He's already 37, I believe, maybe 36. But he's already old, too old to to get this rekindle that imagination to rekindle that dream and make it and run it back again. He's no Tom Brady and Tom Brady just proves with 38 for 51 and 368 yards and four touchdowns that he is still God. Um, Cardinals beat their bears 33 to 22. Uh, Kyler Murray came back and he Dalton played like shit to uh, two touchdowns. I, I believe he had like a couple picks as well. Like maybe four or five. I think he had four picks actually. Let me, let me just check that stat real quick. I heard that it was really, really bad. I mean, this game wasn't showed a whole lot of red zone because it just, it, it was terrible. But, it, I mean, the Bears suck. The Cardinals are really good. And the Bears suck. Yeah, four interceptions for this man. Kyler Murray played okay, 11 for 15. Two touchdowns. He just came back from his injury, which is, you know, we can only hope that he'll get better. Um, but, yeah, the, the 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 Cardinals still, you know, the luck of the schedule, but still winning, you know, doing well with it record-wise. I mean, they're they're uh, now not a 10-2, and 7-0 and away, which is pretty big. The Chargers beat the Bengals 41-22. to The Bengals kind of fell back down to earth and just they, they got into a deep hole. They climbed back and cut it down the lead to pretty close, and then the Chargers just scored 17 points in the fourth quarter. Which you can't you, – you, with that lead, yeah. Uh, it's it's like how do you let them score after you come back? Like where did that spirit go? Where did that fire go? It's like it's just I don't know what happened to them. Um, the Vikings or the Lions beat the Vikings twenty nine to twenty seven, which was which is embarrassing for the Vikings because this is this this game they needed, like they needed this game to to get into the playoffs because the NFC is really really good. And uh, the wild card, the wild card is going to be crowded, and I'm not sure if the Vikings team that's five and seven right now is going to be very convincing to, especially losing the way that they did to the Lions on the very last drive on the very last down on the very last minute second of the game, to the Lions and Jared Goff, is going to be that's that's going to be demoralizing as shit. And uh, congratulations to the Detroit Lions for actually winning a game. Dolphins beat the Giants. 20 to 9. The Dolphins are trending up. The Giants are just still sucking. Uh Tua's playing pretty well. Jalen Waddle played well. It's they're 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 really they, they've caught fire in Miami. They've really caught fire. They they've surprised me because the whole thing with, with Tua Tungavailoa and then Jacoby Brissett just not really, you know, meshing with that offense and now they're all all of a, all of a sudden clicking and doing better and playing, you know, like they actually know each other. For Dolphins fans, you got to be happy because, like, the, you can potentially, if you win out, you can go ten and seven, and you might be in the playoffs because the AFC is not the greatest right now. It's just not not as good as the a- NFC. But you know, we'll see. I'm rooting for you though. The Eagles beat the Giants thirty-three to to eighteen. Now, this was the game where everybody was like, Gardner Minshew was back. Gardner Minshew was back. Listen, he played the Jets, people. He played the Jets. And before that, Jalen Hurts was playing pretty good too. But listen, he played the Jets. You got to remember, I think last year, the Jaguars with him went 0-15. Don't forget about that. Now, maybe it's because it's a new change of scenery. right? Maybe he needed to get out of Jacksonville. Maybe Philadelphia is a good place for him. He played pretty well. <clears throat> but you got to remember, it is the New York Jets. And that defense is atrocious. And that, I mean, Zach Wilson also played pretty bad too. You got to remember that, too. That's not going to help your defense out. It's just not going to help out your defense. The morale is going to be pretty low. And congratulations on Garner Minshew for winning that game and being fired up. But everybody, he can have this moment. But everybody at home and every fan has got to realize, who do they beat? The New York Jets. Okay, moving on. Uh, the Colts beat the Texans 31-0. Uh, the, the, the Colts are just playing... You know, they had that demoralizing loss against the Buccaneers last week, and they just stomped the Texans. I mean, the, the Texans didn't even put up a damn fight, 31-0. to zero. That's, that's that's embarrassing for a football game, man. And it's just like, are, are these guys even trying? Like, and It's like the Colts only scored once every one touchdown for the first three quarters, 7, 7, 7, and 10. So it's like, 
the Texans had the ball, and and then the 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 Texans obviously stopped the Colts multiple times. But it's like, what is happening to you guys? <laughs> like, you might be the worst team of, in, in the entire league. Not the Lions. You guys might be. Moving on, the Washington football team beat the uh, Las Vegas Raiders seventeen to fifteen. Uh, the Washington football team is also trending up. They've won, I think, three in a row. No, four in a row. And are playing better football. The Raiders kind of has just kind of stayed at their, you know, their their same level of play. Just kind of not getting any better. Just kind of staying there. And the 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 football team, the Washington football team, just has a lot of confidence and a lot of um, grit to grit uh, to win those games. And they have been home and away, which is going to be, you know, I I mean, I don't think that they're going to beat the Dallas Cowboys next week. I don't think so. Or this week, I don't think so, but it's uh, the way that Dallas has been playing and just not really being all that good, like kind of like the Rams, like they started off pretty hot and then kind of just like dipped in form. I don't know if they can actually, if they could actually win a game that they actually like, that's going to be going down to the wire. I'm not saying that they're going to push them to their limits, but like if it goes down to the wire, I'd much rather take the football team than the Cowboys. I'm just saying. Jaguars lose to the Rams. Uh, the Rams beat the Jaguars 37 to 7 which we needed by the way. I mean if the last couple of games have been pretty mediocre for the Rams, Stafford's been pretty bad, everybody else has been pretty bad. Um but we needed this game. We had to beat them by at least 30, at least 30 to ensure in our hearts that we're a good football team. That we're actually good because if we lost to the Jaguars like like if we won to the Jaguars like 14 to 10 13 to 10, I would be very, very, very concerned. Like, you won that game, but you should have won that game by a lot of points, and you didn't, and that's very, very, very concerning. Um, But happy for the win, happy for Odell Beckham Jr. getting his first touchdown, or a touchdown, and uh, giving us that war zone celebration. That was sick. Cooper Cup got a touchdown. Sony Michelle was the main back, and he played pretty well. 21, 24 carries, 124, 100, 121 yards, and one touchdown was pretty good. Steelers beat the Ravens 20-19 to in a heartbreaking loss. Mark Andrews should have caught that ball, but also it wasn't the most perfect pass that Lamar Jackson threw, so it's like kind of like, you know, it's both of their, fa- both of their faults, not just Lamar, not just Mark Jackson, or Mark Andrews, so it's just like... I, <sighs> I agree with going for the win. I truly, truly do because, I mean, why not? Why just, you know, risk uh, an opening touchdown by the Steelers and uh, you already have your cornerbacks are already, like, kind of banged up and probably didn't have the juice to finish that game. So it's like, I agree going for the win. But it was just a bad, not the best throw and not a great effort from Mark Andrews as well. So they lost and the Steelers kind of... They they took one from the Ravens like they needed to have they didn't need it but it would have been really really good to have that win. Um, the Seahawks beat the Niners thirty to twenty three actually a pretty good game, um, but this definitely hurt the 49, 49ers chances because Seattle is already pretty much in the dumps right now they're pretty much not going to make it with four and eight and four games left they're pretty you can pretty much uh, guarantee that they're not going to. Um, be in the playoffs. So this was a big, big win for the, to hurt or to hinder or to stop the, the momentum of the 49ers, which, you know, having Kittle back, he fucking went off. He had nine receptions, 181 yards and two touchdowns. No Debo Samuel though. That's, that's a, that's a, not to say that he's, you know, he, he's their best player, but he really does bring an energy to that team that, uh, that makes him so dynamic and so deadly in the in the red zone, and it's uh, and even throughout the field, every edge of the field, he's just he's an offensive weapon that is very crucial to their success. Uh, the Chiefs beat the Broncos twenty-two to nine. Very boring game, very duddy game. Um, the Broncos, I think that they used like maybe 30, 30 plays and didn't score at all. Something like that. They scored like they ran like thirty plays or something like that, and they like didn't score a single point in one drive. It was just like it was it was so mind boggling how they just couldn't score. I don't know, but you know, the Chiefs again. They 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 didn't play that well either, though. I mean, Tyree Kill didn't go off. Patrick Mahomes didn't really go off either. It was just it was kind of like a 
you know, let's just eek by and just win this game and then move on. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it wasn't that good of a, of a performance. I was just like, okay, whatever, fine. Let's just move on. The Patriots at Monday night beat the Bills 14 to 10. I mean, first of all, this game was absolutely ruined by the weather. There was no passing game, just running game, which was fine. But it was just like, oh, I need these fantasy points from Stefan Diggs, but it's like impossible now because you can't throw the ball. You can't really kick the ball either. So it's just like, damn, it sucked. Like, it was fun to watch, but it's like, when it's just going to make like a semi okay product, I'm like, okay, okay, I'm okay. I'm, it would have been better if it was performed, it was played in a dome because I want to see those two teams at their height. I want to see Josh Allen going off, Mac Jones going off, the defense is going off, the kickers going off, everybody just rolling on all cylinders because that is such a cool matchup that in the past couple of years would not have meant a damn thing because the Bills would have been so bad. Now that the Bills are pretty good and the Pats are good, it's like, let's get at these guys in an arena or a dome and have an actual proper football game or a game with good weather. I mean, at least better weather than they had before because, I mean, that was like bl- bl- blizzard blizzard level wind right there in Buffalo. I was just like, what are they doing? This guy can't even kick a field goal like 20 yards out. He's just being blown back. This, this just is not even fair, really. I might as well just go in for on fourth down to try to get the first down or try to score. Like, it's just not even worth punt or kicking the ball. It was just, there's a point where the weather is fun. Like, when it's rainy, when it's when it's cold and chilly, windy a little bit, but not, like, fucking blizzard-level wind. Like I said, like, that's just, it's just not enjoyable. Nobody wants to watch that. And you're just like, okay, whatever. They're going to run the ball, and then, you, yep, can't throw it. It's just going to blow away. Yeah, it's okay, whatever. So it's like, I understand why people like that, the weather effect, and people just like the the dome, you know, atmosphere of it just being so controlled. I I like both. I like the weather effect, and I like the dome. I, but I'm, I like, I don't want the weather to be too bad, where it's like unplayable. You just can't even play the damn game. It's just bad. And then it's like, well, you get to see them adjust. Well, yeah, but it's like, it's still not fun to watch, though. And then you get to see people adjust badly. And then just play badly. It's just like, okay, this is cool. <laughs> if you're not, you know, a fan of those teams, like, and, and you're like neutral like me, it just becomes like a, okay, whatever, fine. Um, But the highlight of that night, though, Joe Buck. And I'm not a big fan of Joe Buck, but he roasted Peyton Manning so hard. He's like, you know, Joe, when was the last time that you thought that you, or you wanted to take a nap when you were calling a game or whatever, because, you know, that game, again, was very, very boring. And then Joe Buck hits back with, I don't know, probably when you guys were playing the Seahawks in the Super Bowl. And then Peyton Manning just started laughing and chuckling, and he was throwing his head up and laughing, and it's because, if you don't remember that game, I think they won, the Seahawks beat the Broncos that year, 40-something to 8, I think. And it was just one of the worst Super Bowls of all time. Like, all time, just terrible unexciting or very un unappealing low energy because they were just getting blown out so badly and it's just it was like done after the first quarter you already knew who was going to win it was so bad and then that got everybody laughing that that made its way on twitter and on social media it was so funny though it it was it was a great it was a great roast by joe buck i got to say I'm not a huge fan of him, but the last couple years of broadcasting, whether it be baseball or football, he's actually gotten a little bit of a more of a personality nowadays. He's he's more on the you know he's got more quips, he's got more jokes, he's got more voices that I've heard him do and, and impressions. So it's like I think he's kind of like dabbling into a being more of an entertaining you know broadcaster than just the stern voice of Fox Football. So I liked it. I liked it. I thought that was pretty cool. And I know that that wasn't a broadcast, and it was just him zooming on with Peyton and Eli, but it was like, it's showing through that he's becoming more of a entertaining uh, broadcaster than just, you know, like I said, the stern voice of Fox football. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, it was it was a good burn. I liked that a lot. It was, it was You can tell that he had that in the chamber, ready to go, which I'm proud because that means he actually worked on it. He thought of that, and it was like, you know what, I'm going to say this. It was a good joke. It, it was very, very, very funny. Um, good times, great times. 
Uh, that's going to be it today, everybody. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Remember, you can find this podcast at Intelligent Moron with Alex Silva on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcast, all under that name. Remember to subscribe, like, share, uh, click the bell on YouTube because that all helps. That all helps the algorithm, that helps me, that helps people see it, that aren't subscribed to maybe come and join the community and join the conversation and have some fun and also rate and review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts because that also helps a lot too. It gets more recognition, uh, allows for sponsorships, allows for more popularity, share with your friends, your family, uh, anybody that you meet. Say, hey, uh, you got any podcasts to listen to? Yes, this one that my buddy does or this guy that I knew from high school does one. It's it's called This Intelligent Moron with Alex Silva. They're like, what is that all about? Uh, you gotta listen to it. Just do that. It helps me. It'll help you. We'll have fun. We'll continue to do this. And just, I'm here for the ride. Let's keep the ride going, people. Let's keep the ride going. Anyways, people, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Remember to do all that and subscribe and rate and review. Don't forget that. It's very important. And I will see you guys next week.